Hi everyone, this is Adam with The Modern Collective. I'm back with another Tip Tuesday, our weekly blog feature on The Modern Collective blog. I will admit it has been a little bit since I did a Tip Tuesday. Sorry for slacking a little bit, but I hope this one is useful today. Um, we're going to be talking about fixing stray hairs in Photoshop. Uh, we've been working on location with our clients for many years. Uh, we work in Minnesota. The summer is crazy with senior sessions. We've had wonderful weather this year but the wind has been pretty crazy. There's only so much you can do on location to control straight hair with your high school seniors, um, but the little tip we share today can help you refine those straight hairs a little bit in post-production and kind of give it a little bit more of a professional look. So I'm gonna jump in, show you how to do this. We're gonna be using the Liquify tool today. Um, really simple to do. If you haven't ever used the Liquify tool before, I'll show you kind of what's available in there. Just touch lightly on some of the tools in there, but feel free to explore after we introduce you to the Liquify tool today, because um, there's a lot that can be done with the Liquify tool in Photoshop. Um, so to get started, we need to go into the Liquify preferences or into the Liquify tool itself. Um, it can be accessed by going up to Filter and Liquify. It's kind of in this first set of options here, second from the bottom. Um, note of caution when using the Liquify tool, it's kind of a beast of a tool. It takes a little bit of computer power to use it. So if you have a lot of images open in Photoshop, make sure you're closing all of them except the one you're working on. If you have a lot of programs running on your computer while you're working with this, close them down um, and then start working in Liquify and you'll find that it works a lot easier and it's a lot quicker for you to do this. So once you're in Liquify, um, you have your own set of tools in this menu. Uh, they're all on the left-hand side. There's quite a few of them to choose from. Uh, we're gonna touch only on a couple of them today. Like I said, explore a little bit in here and find what works for you um, and see what else these tools do for you as you start working in here. Today, we're gonna be working primarily with the Move left tool or push left tool. It's kind of the black checkerboard, white checkerboard with the left arrow, okay? And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taming down these kind of stray hairs um, on the left side here. And we're just going to be kind of pushing pixels into the full hair that's located right next to our face. Um, this is also a backlit image. The sun was kind of coming from behind her, hitting the concrete. It was lighting her face, but it was also really highlighting these hairs. Um, so we're just going to tame them down a little bit, make it a little bit more refined by using the Liquify tool. The first thing though I want to do is mask off her face. And what that is going to do, it's going to stop any of the adjustments we're doing from affecting any part of her face features. So her cheek line, her eyes, her nose, her mouth. We don't want to be adjusting any of those um, and pushing things different ways because it's going to just make it look really funny and it's going to end up not looking like her. So to do that, we want to select the mask tool right here. It's actually called the freeze mask tool. You can hit F to activate that or just click it right here in the menu options. Um, and we're going to go over to the right hand options. Each of these tools on the left also correspond with these options over here. Okay, so we want to select a brush size first of all that makes sense for her face size. So right here we're in the 480s um, and you can see the brush kind of fills her face nicely. Uh, when I use the mask tool, I like to bring up the density quite a bit just so it's nice and full brush. Um, and we're just going to mask in on her face. If you start painting here and you're not seeing anything, go down to the bottom here and click show mask. It's a kind of a little radio button or a toggle over here. Um, and once you click that, you can kind of see that the mask is kind of filling her face. So just paint over her, your client's face area. Um, I'm going to be really critical about this edge over here and making sure we get that cheek line and make sure we get her eyes. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and get right to the edge over here. So that just protects anything we do to this edge over here from affecting this area here. Um, it just helps keep that hole. If it's masked off, it's not going to be adjusted, okay? If you feel like you've gone a little bit too far over with the area, there is an er erase mask tool or thaw mask tool, they call it, um, and you can just erase it away um, if you got too far over into the area that you want to be adjusting, okay? So if it's red, it's not going to be affected. 
Um, once you have it masked off, I actually like to turn that mask off um, so it's not going to show the mask. It is still masked. We're just toggling this little um, preview of that mask off. Okay, so we mask that. It is masked. We just have it to be displayed off right now so we can kind of see what we're working with once we start moving pixels around. To do the actual refining of this hair, we're going to again be using the push left tool. The tool is kind of a cool one because depending on what way you drag the tool um, determines which way the pixels move in the image. Okay, So let me show you. If we start up here and we click and we drag down, it's going to push all these hairs to the right. Okay, So let me show you that. I'm going to start up here and I'm just going to drag down. Okay. So you can just keep dragging down here and you can see that that's pushing those hairs over to the right. Um, you can use like short little strokes and you can push those over. I'm going to like kind of tame this down. Um, if you kind of go along the side with this full hair here, we can push it into that kind of crazy hair by clicking and dragging up. Okay, see how that kind of pushes it in to the other hair and it kind of makes that look a little bit fuller. Okay. But for the most part, to kind of tame down this hair, we want to get in here and kind of just control this edge and kind of crazy hairs along the edge over here. Um, so just keep going, starting at the top and dragging down. Now if the hair was on the other side of her face that was crazy, for instance like this one, we would want to start at the bottom and drag up to push it to the left. Okay, so down pushes pixels to the right, up pushes pixels to the left, if you go horizontally if you go to the right it's going to push things up if you go horizontally horizontally to the left it's going to push things down okay I want to undo that because we don't want to be doing that um, and I'm just going to keep on kind of working in here some of these that are kind of the long little strands here those are going to be adjusted later we're going to get those um, probably with the patch tool or the clone tool once we accept these changes um, and we're just going to kind of concentrate though more on the like the crazy fuzzy loopy stuff um, that's kind of being created right on the edge of the full hair okay um, also just be conscious of the edge of the face just in case the mask didn't get it all you don't want to be kind of making chipmunk cheeks here you can kind of see that that's pulling it out so we want to make sure that's a nice even line here okay I actually think we probably have this pretty good here um, it doesn't look like it did a lot but I'm going to show you a little trick to see a kind of a before and after while you're in the liquify preferences on the right hand side there's a show backdrop button if you click that it's going to show you kind of where you started so it's going to do an overlay of the start image and you can see where we started with kind of this crazy hair here um, it does an opacity you can adjust the opacity down here uh, and it kind of shows where we began with this before we started kind of liquefying everything in. Okay, um, I see here that we kind of pulled our cheek in. So I'm going to pull that back to line that up. And I'm just going to toggle this on so you can see kind of a before and after. Okay, so we actually did quite a bit of an adjustment on that crazy hair. Um, I'm going to pull this in, straighten that a little bit, make it look more natural. And I think that's a pretty good start to correcting this kind of crazy hair on the side. So once you have everything kind of finalized here, you just click OK, and it's going to apply those settings to your image in Photoshop, OK? So again, I'm just going to do a Command Z so you can see where we started and where we kind of got to with just the liquify here, OK? So pretty huge difference already. The last kind of final thing that I typically do is grab the patch tool over in the toolbar, um, and I just kind of select around these kind of crazy far stray hairs and just kind of pull them out of there. Um, again, just circle them, pull them to the side, and kind of get them refined a little bit more. This little looping one here, I'll probably just take the loop away and drag that over. Um, you can also take the clone tool at 100% on normal mode and just kind of brush in here to tame those down a little bit too. Um, some people might wonder, well, why don't you just use the clone tool from the beginning? But if you use too much of the clone tool, it kind of does a crazy weird haloing effect, um, and it gets really blurry around the hairline, and it just doesn't look natural. So to use it just sparingly around the edge um, to kind of soften those areas is probably better than just using the clone tool altogether. 
Um, so I would say this is much better than where we kind of started from. I'm just going to jump over to our history of where we began and to kind of where we ended. And you can see how much that kind of refines that image and kind of gives it a little bit more polished look. And your client's going to be happier with that than having that crazy wind blowing hair. Um, one note of caution too when using the liquify tool, this is a method that can be used when you have a pretty blurry background and a simple solid background. Um, if you have anything that's very patterned back here or if you have any really vertical um, lines coming through here, let's say like sheet metal or anything like that, the liquify method to control these is probably not the best way to do it because those kind of man-made straight lines are going to have like a wobbled texture to it, okay? They're not going to look straight. It's going to kind of skew things a little bit. So using liquify to do that is not the best way to go about this. Um, but if you have a solid kind of blurred out background like this image, this is a great way to really tame down those hairs but keep it natural looking. So also with the liquify tool, you can use the same method to adjust clothing. So this little bump in her vest here, you could easily just suck that in and kind of tame it down a little bit. Even over here, we can kind of suck that in. Um, so use the liquify tool to do a lot of different things in your photos as well. Play around with it, be creative with it, um, and don't be afraid to kind of mess around in there because you can always undo it. Um, but just kind of try those tools out if you've never used them before uh, and kind of work your way towards doing simple little fixes that just save you time and make it look more natural in your images. So that's kind of our tip for the day. I hope you found this useful. If you did, definitely share it on Pinterest or on Facebook with your friends that you think would find it useful as well. If you have questions, feel free to add them in the comments below or shoot us an email at info at themoderncollective.com. You can also visit our blog at themoderncollective.com slash blog, and there's more Tip Tuesdays that we've shared in past weeks, so check those out as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tip today. Have a great day, and we'll see you back in the future Tip Tuesday posts.